You have five tickets. They go back to 2004, 2005, and 2006. Can you prosecute those tickets? No, Your Honor, not from 04, 05. Um, we won't even have copies of those, Your Honor. Those matters are going to be dismissed. I wasn't aware of them. Anyway, I'm sorry. Well, I Thank mean, you. The issue isn't whether you are aware of them. The issue is whether or not they were placed on the vehicle, and they yeah. were. At the time, you were living on 9th Street in Woonsocket. We're keeping track of you. <laughs> then you got a ticket on Friendship Street in 2008. That was a parking meter on Friendship Street. That's going to cost you $25. Then you have a parking meter in 2014 on Friendship Street. It's going to cost you $25. So, so far, you're doing pretty good because all you got is $50. And now you have four parking tickets. Are you talking about the most recent ones? Most now? recent ones, right. All right. The on one the, on, on 11-1. On the Nissan. Yeah, the one on 11-1, one, I went to Social Security because they had cut my check. Because my son was recently killed last year. So, they cut my check because Who? he had old money. Who? My son was oh. killed. Watch of last year. Right? So I was his rep payee. So they took my money because he had old money. So I had to go to Social Security to fix that matter. When I came out, my, I had a ticket. Then another time on the 5th, the parking meter wasn't working. I have the picture for that. On 1-4, I was at court because my uh, landlord was trying to evict me. There was that eviction court. Come out, I got a ticket. Mind you, he won possession of the apartment, so I had to move. So I got a ticket, he won possession of the apartment. Then I get another one because I tried to go to the legal services to try to get help to fix this. I go get some change out of Dunkin' Donuts, come out, I got a hundred dollar ticket. What was the like uh, I can't win? What was the situation with the mix-up in Social Security with your son? My son was killed last year, March of last year. They said that he owed $75 of overpayment from May of 2016. Mind you, he was already deceased at that time. So what they did was they stopped my whole check until I went in there to fix the problem. So when I came out, I had a pocket. All right, all right, all right. <clears throat> I've had a tough year already. But I, I really, I'm on SSDI. I don't, I don't have four hundred dollars to give you on top of whatever else I really do. I just had to come up with money for a new apartment. I'm still paying Russell the boy for my son's funeral. Like, I, I don't know where this money's supposed to come from. I wish I would have got my brother that day, and he wouldn't have killed my son. That's why my son's going. I'm just really having a tough time here. Right? I think we can all express a sympathy to you and understand the trauma that you have experienced. I'm still going back to what the court for that. There's still emotions and I'm going to take all of the circumstances that you just have explained to me into consideration to see if I can balance the equities to protect the interests of the city and take into consideration you know, the horrific story that you just told us relative to your son. I don't think anyone 
day of lifetime, but never want to experience that. So. It's the worst feeling in the world. I feel so empty. I'm going to reduce this to $50. How much time do you need to pay it? I have it on me now. That's not going to leave it without any money, is it? I'll leave it with five dollars. <laughs> Thank you, Rihanna. I'm not going to leave you with five dollars. I'm not going to leave. I'm going. I'm going to dismiss everything. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> with our best wishes and hope that things turn around good for you. Okay. Good, good luck to you. First thing I want you to take away from today is this. You will have good days and you'll have bad days, but you will always learn something more or something new, and you will learn more overall on bad days than good days. You will learn more about yourself, you'll learn more about relationships, you'll learn about life and principles, and it'll build your character. If you're a person who wants, let's say, improve on your character of patience let's say don't complain when you're waiting in a line you ain't going to grow in patience until you put in a place to wait it's like you go into a gym and you know you're walking through the front doors and you know you tell your wife or your husband i'm going to the gym you go into the gym and you come in three feet and you do a u-turn and you ride out i went to the gym Ain't gonna do nothing. You gotta go in there. What are you gonna do? You gotta pick up the weights. And you exercise the muscles that you wanna build. I stand before you without arms and legs, but a very strong man because of the bad days of my life. You know how it is. If you didn't go what you've gone through, you wouldn't be who you are today. And I'm not belittling your pain, and don't worry, I've seen pain in my life, and I've seen not only in my life, but people's lives, and people say, well, at least I have no arms, no legs, and then what am I supposed to say? Well, at least I'm not an African orphan who's dying at four years old, and I met that person. What about the 10-year-old girl that was bought for 700 US dollars in Mumbai and kidnapped as a sex slave to have 350 clients before the age of 13, pregnant at 12, put the baby under the bed while she works on top, abandoned by her family. After she pays her debt of 700 US dollars after three years with her child, she leaves on the streets of Mumbai hoping for a new life, no family, no job, no food. Her baby needs food. She gets raped, beaten up on the street. She comes back to the only way that she knows how to make money. She goes back to the brothels. She gets pregnant at 15, the, the second time, and then that child dies. And then 20 years old, she comes up to me. Yes, I have met this woman. She comes up crying. She says, Nick, I just found out I've got HIV AIDS. And I got fined for being a prostitute. What do you say to that? You may have arms and legs, but unless you know three things. Number one, who are you and what your value is? Number two, what is your purpose here in life? And number three, what is your destiny when you're done here? If you don't know the answers of any of those three questions, you're more disabled than I. Hey guys, so I'm just letting you know that if you think your life is rough, then just think about other people. Some people have even worse than you. So you should be grateful about life and stuff. And guys, think about it. Some people are homeless. Some people can't talk. Some people can't walk. Some people can't... Some people can't get jobs. Some people... Some people can't drive, some people get house can't get houses. Like guys, there's just so much stuff that people that people can have like that's hard in life. So guys, if you think your life is hard, then think about those people. They have even worse. So guys, just try to be grateful and life seems rough, but as long as you just have faith in God and stuff, then everything should be okay.